this is just like me sitting alone in my room. I feel just so relaxed and so so open and so it's just incredible. And of course, it wasn't it wasn't always like that in the beginning. When I came up and sh shared uh, as a participant, I would just share how nervous I felt, but how calm I felt at the same time. And so that that alone was really incredible. And so this is a. Uh, this is one of the key things of this training is that you just simply are given a very simple set of tools that you can implement immediately, the support structure, um, that you can test immediately um, and just see what happens. So what we're, what we're saying in this training is that nothing about you, your thoughts, your emotions, your circumstances are really anything to worry about. There isn't anything there, basically. Ooh. And so um, and, and one way to look at this in a very, si very simply is look at what we're doing now. What, what are we doing now? How many ways can you describe what you're doing right now? I'm wearing trousers, I'm a man, I'm being a man. I'm sitting on a, a white stool, I'm in Bristol. Um, I don't know, maybe there's 50-50 men and women, so that's the room now. And, you know, like it's 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 basically infinite. We can describe what's going on in our lives in in, in infinite ways, and so you know the, the 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 overused saying about a glass being half empty and half full. You know how it, no, it doesn't matter how you describe it. The glass is exactly the same, and so we've just become very very skilled in our lives at describing our, our, what's going on, basically labelling open intelligence. I just wanted to say, you said, I, I'm in, I'm in. I just thought of, like, open intelligence is the new black. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so you see, this, uh, this, this way of describing um, our reality, we become very skilled as humans, and most of us uh, become skilled in, describe, in describing it in quite a negative way. And, and again, this is called constructive criticism. It, from, an, as on an in, from an individual level, you know, we don't like anything about ourselves. I mean, I can only share my own experience, but most of the things, my thoughts, my body type, where I lived in the world, the things I'd done in my life were all cause of, uh, not definitely not a cause of celebration, Just a, it was just proof that I'm a bit of a loser and, you know. And so, as I got older, this, just, this, this description of things not being okay, me being a loser, everyone in the world being stupid, especially the world leaders, it just got worse and worse and worse. But basically I was just repeating and labelling my experience of reality. And so in this training, what we're doing is we're, we're foregoing all of that bull bullshit that we've just repeated, the descriptions, because you can describe it any way you like. And what we do is we just bring the focus back to the basis of our experience. And so that's very simple. And, and for me, it was, it was totally radical in the beginning to actually come to a practice where I didn't have to change anything about myself. So when I take a short moment, what that means is I just, I just relax and I acknowledge open intelligence. And so um, if, you're, if you're quite new or if you're very new or if you're brand new, the way you can take a short moment when you remember is just to stop thinking. So when you stop thinking, there's still something in your experience that you could recognize. So in this training, we call that open intelligence. And the practice, short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, become continuous. That's the only instruction. It's very simple. You're just refocusing um, your attention onto open intelligence for a brief moment, rather than all of the descriptions. And so, of course, in the beginning, you think, well, hang on a minute. How is this leaving everything as it is? So should we have a little experiment right now? Try, let's try leaving everything not as it is. <laughs> nothing, nothing happens. It's just like, you know, you can't make the glass half empty or half full. It's just, it's the same. It's like the description is irrelevant. And so this is what we start to see with this simple practice. We could basically describe our reality however we like and we become very skilled at it, and it seems to be the case that I am Adrian, I'm miserable, I'm bored, I'm a loser. And especially if you repeat that for 30 years, then it's like, hmm, yeah, I think I am a loser. And then what, what do you do? You go to a, a doctor, psychiatrist, he'll give you a 
library shelves full of proof of why you're a loser and who you can blame about it. And it's usually your parents. But then if you're really unfortunate, you might hear about past lives that you've had. So not only, not only can you not sort out this miserable fleshy lump here right now, you've got 10,000 lives at least that you've got to sort out as well. You know, it's just like... It's just quite depressing, at best, isn't it? <laughs> and so, so it, was, it, was, it, was so, it was so beautiful. When I came across this training, I didn't believe a single thing that anyone was saying. I was like, what are they talking about? What is a short moment? Nobody can tell me what a short moment is. How can I take a short moment if nobody tells me what a short moment is? And, and, and I was ready for a big, juicy argument, and Candice just said to me, oh, that's fine, just show up, just listen to talks basically, so that's what I did. And, and, and what happened in my experience was that I just started to see, well, there is something about me that is free of all of the descriptions. It doesn't mean the descriptions aren't there, they, you know, they flow along, but when I acknowledge open intelligence, there's something in my experience that's okay. And, 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 and so, because that worked, then I started to just test out other, the other aspects of uh, the Four Mainstays. And um, one of the greatest things Say, so I've always been incredibly selfish. I just want, I want relief. I want to feel good. Me. I don't care about anyone else. So when I came to this training and Candice was saying that me taking responsibility for my own data, me relying on short moments, that's the, that's the, uh, the solution to all of humanity's problems. I couldn't care less. I didn't care about humanity's problems. When I relied on short moments, when I practiced um, and, and did the trainings, I felt better and it was like, oh, this is great. The more trainings I do, the more I listen to, I feel better. And then, and then what happened was like, which was totally amazing, it, was, it, was, it didn't make any sense, but the more I actually served other people in the community, the better I felt. And so it was like, oh wow. I was, I was and, and, and in the end, in, in Rishikesh, uh, seven years ago when I first came to the training, we didn't have all these fantastic people everywhere. There weren't hundreds of people. So you had 10 tasks to do. I was burning DVDs, recording Candice, editing Candice, um, printing all the texts. I had this DVD burner thing in my flat in Rishikesh. It was just like crazy. And, and I was going, oh my God, this is amazing. The more I serve, the better I feel, the more. <laughs> and, 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 and eventually the penny dropped. It was like, oh wow, you know, like, this, this, this is what it means to be a, a, a true human being. It's like, what happens very quickly is that your self-focus, you know, oh, I'm Adrian, I'm fat, I need a girlfriend, I need to do some <laughs> exercise. You know, th these were the things that just ran around and around in my head uh, every day. In fact, upon waking, this would, this would, this would, this would just start. And, and it would be like, oh, get out of bed, you fat lump, eat, do some exercise. And I'd go, oh, no, I don't want to do, you know, like this, this, this internal dialogue. And, and I, it would always go on for about half an hour. And then I'd have this, um, I'd just go, OK, I will definitely get up and go for a run tomorrow and then just fall back to sleep. Um, and so, so, so my, my entire waking day would be obs obsessed with a tiny selection of, of thoughts about what I need to be happy. And when I did the 12 empowerments, when I came to the, the open meetings, this self-focus just naturally really just vanished. I, I, I could see clearly that all of it was an opportunity for me to bring my focus back to open intelligence. So my depression, it was the most powerful thing. It was great. It didn't matter. It can be there. It was just amazing. It's just like this is something that I tried to eradicate from my life, for my entire adult life since I was about 17. I must not feel depressed. Depression is a sign that there's something wrong and that I'm a failure. And now I do this training and I can leave it alone. Oh, such, such, such relief. In fact, the depression was the key. It was like, it was, it, it was like this, poking me, reminding me to, to practice short moments. It was a gift. And then just in continuing to do that, I could really see the true nature of depression is that it's inseparable from love and power and benefit. And that might sound all hippie and rubbish, but that is, that is the nature of reality. The nature of reality is we, we are aware, pure, beneficial, wide open space. And that sounds just really ridiculous. And, and so this is the importance of the Four Mainstays because this practice is not about attaining some strange, uh, disconnected 
blissful state, which which is wonderful, but it's actually about being being of profound benefit, being able to be a powerful human being and actually get off your ass and do do something about the fucking state of the world because it's a disaster. And if you if you think that, I mean, my experience was that I felt helpless. No matter how many marches I went on, whoever whoever it was just did what they wanted anyway. And and I, I was so depressed. I didn't read newspapers. I didn't watch the news. I didn't do anything. Eventually, I just stayed at home. And and I would say within within a year of practicing relying on the four mainstays, I just felt like totally empowered. Totally, I have the solution to my own suffering. And that just that's the that the solution is just to leave everything as it is. And the profundity of that instruction, it can't be overemphasized. I always get those mixed up. <laughs> Underemphasized, overemphasized, overemphasized. Yeah, oh, I, you understand what I mean, don't you? I always mix them up. Um, and um, because you see, what's happening is if, if you're, as an individual, trying to eradicate something from your life, so the things you don't like about yourself, like depression, for example, then that mechanism of trying to eradicate something in order to feel better is what plays itself out in groups of people and ultimately in, in countries. We don't like the way this country is doing something, so we want to eradicate that behaviour or that race, and then we will feel, feel secure. So when you start to recognise that you don't have to play that game anymore at, at all, that everything, in fact, is, is, is your empowerment, all you start to recognise in your own experience is power. It's just the most incredible thing. And you see it in yourself first, then you start to see it in everyone else. And being here in Bristol with so many people, if you're, if you're new, then what, what you'll see is just groups of people working together uh, in a very profound and powerful way and actually getting things done. There is, there is zero need to, uh, for a human resource, as they call it where you, basically the management just spends all day long listening to people going, oh, I don't like so-and-so, she called, she called me a bitch this morning, and my, you know, my, why did you give her this, this job? It's my job, don't you like, don't you think I can do my, you know, just stuff that doesn't need to be talked about really, but it, it turns out that this actually takes up 80 to 90% of a manager's job when people aren't relying on open intelligence. And when you're with teams that are taking responsibility for their data, it means that you can have people that work together who conventionally might not, you know, get on at all. Their political views are different, their religions are different, their ages are different. I mean, I always share this, but sometimes I have to peel potatoes at the centre in Sweden, and I hate peeling potatoes. I was convinced that my parents only had me as, as a potato peeler, because that's what I used to do. <laughs> From about the age of seven, I was peeling potatoes in the lounge, and uh, I, did, I really didn't like it. And so now, now I'm at the centre in Sweden, and they have this amazing machine, my wife. I, I love you. Uh, it's, a potato, it's a potato peeling machine, and it peels just thousands of potatoes. It's the most amazing thing. So you, ta you take the potatoes, put them in the top, it just rumbles around, and they, all these potatoes come out, take them up, and it's like... But every time I volunteer to peel potatoes, it, the machine's broken, and then, so I'm, I have to do them by hand. And so uh, not only am I doing potatoes by hand, but I'm doing them with other people as well, like in close proximity. And it's, it's you know, every single thing that somebody says, every single potato, it's just like, you know, and peeling potatoes for 150 people, that's, that's hours of peeling potatoes. So... There's just rage and anger and fuming, you know, indignation and wishing I did, you know, why am I here? What am I doing? And, and to actually be able to be in that situation with all of this raging and feel completely empowered, basically completely in love with myself and the people I'm working with, every single potato, I love you, but not, not, in, a, not in a, well, that is in a really strange way. <laughs> How can you love, love a potato? But, um, 
but re really to start to, to recognize that every single thing that occurs in your mind stream is inseparable from the basis of your experience and so any description you hear and, and many of you are lucky enough to do the fantastic trainings from Candice you'll hear many things in the in the text like you know da data is bliss I mean I'm paraphrasing but it's very important to start to, to see that everything in the training is easy to experience but very difficult to understand. So when I say things like anger and love are inseparable, that is the nature of reality, but it must be your experience and, and this is the power of short moments. So even, even in, from the very, the very beginning of this training, if this is your first day, all, all you need to see is that your data, your thoughts, like anger, at some point you'll say, oh, I'm angry, and, that, and, and you'll see that anger as an opportunity to choose to relax and acknowledge open intelligence. So right there, there's a direct link. And if you keep taking those short moments, whenever you remember, what you'll start to recognize is what's described in the training, that all data, all thoughts, all emotions, all circumstances are inseparable from this expanse of love bliss. Oh, I sound like a hippie again. But that's the nature of reality. Just because it makes me feel all <laughs> doesn't mean that it's not true. You know, and so I'm, I'm so grateful to Candice. I'm so grateful to the people that went before me who had the balls to actually, you know, not put up with any more bullshit anymore. We are perfect. We are powerful. We are not these tiny little rubbish creatures who, you know, I'm a loser. I, I'm not good enough. I'm meh, 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 like that. And so... The, the four main stages of balanced view give you a very simple structure and suggestions that you can implement right now to test them in your experience. So, like Lizzie said, we've got a whole week together, so let's let's go for it and see what happens. Because there's no there's no end to uh, the the increase in stability and open intelligence. There's no point at which you will arrive. So we see already you already have open intelligence. Stop thinking; it's there. So you're not getting anything by, by, by being here, but you are, what you are getting is, is an opportunity to you know, really take a stand for what it means to be a true human being.